You've taken all the necessary steps to secure loan forgiveness, yet still find yourself waiting for that life-changing email confirming your debt has been erased. What gives? You've likely spent countless hours researching, consolidating your loans, enrolling in income-driven repayment plans, and following up with your loan servicer, all while juggling the responsibilities of work and family life. It's exhausting, and it feels like you're running in circles. Despite your best efforts, that golden ticket to loan forgiveness still feels just out of reach. The ongoing lawsuits surrounding programs like the SAVE plan and, and Biden's newest forgiveness plan have only added to the uncertainty and frustration. I've talked to countless people in your shoes. They're sick of waiting. You want your loans forgiven, and it seems like Biden is just stringing you along in hopes of buying your vote in the next election. Or worse, Trump could retake the White House, leaving you to wonder what will happen to the forgiveness you've been waiting on. If you're feeling any of those things, I get it. The anxiety, the anger, the sense of being left in limbo, it's all valid. But here's the thing, don't lose hope just yet. While progress has been slow, the key forgiveness programs are still in place and many borrowers have successfully had their loans forgiven. In fact, my team and I have helped hundreds of clients receive over $150 million in loan forgiveness over the past year under Biden's different forgiveness programs. We've also helped thousands more of our newsletter subscribers receive millions more forgiveness simply following our tips and tricks. Hey, I'm Stanley Tate, a student loan lawyer who helps really smart people get even smarter about their student loans. In this video, we'll provide you with the most up-to-date information on where things stand as of June 2024, including the status of the lawsuits, upcoming deadlines, and what you can do to stay on track. Our goal is to give you the clarity and actionable steps you need to keep moving forward. So take a deep breath, grab a cup of coffee, and let's dive in together. By the end of this video, you'll have a clearer understanding of the current student loan forgiveness landscape and the steps you can take to keep your own journey moving forward, no matter what political curveballs come our way. With that said, let's get into the current state of the main student loan forgiveness programs and the lawsuits that have been making headlines. As of June 2024, the big forgiveness programs such as the one-time account adjustment, public service loan forgiveness, and the SAVE plan, all of those, they're still in effect. Of those three, the main forgiveness program we need to talk about is the one-time account adjustment. This program has been a game changer because it gives you forgiveness credit toward not just one, but three different programs. Imagine you're on the path to income-driven repayment plan forgiveness. That's the type of forgiveness program that wipes out your loans after 20 or 25 years of payments. The one-time account adjustment swoops in and gives you a boost, bringing you even closer to your goal. Or maybe you're a public servant, dedicating your career to helping others. The adjustment recognizes your service and gives you credit toward public service loan forgiveness, making that well-deserved forgiveness more obtainable. And let's not forget about the SAVE plan forgiveness. If you're enrolled in this plan, the one-time account adjustment can wipe out your loans after 10 years if you borrow $12,000 or less for school. The adjustment works by reviewing your student loan history to give you credit that you can use toward any of these three programs. It takes into account your time in any repayment plan and in qualifying forbearances and deferments, ensuring you get the credit you deserve. Now we have a whole video dedicated to this program, so I won't do a deep dive here. But what I will add is that I can guarantee you that anytime you've heard about loan forgiveness in the news over the past year, the one-time account adjustment was likely behind that relief. And that's going to remain true moving forward, especially after federal courts struck down the only attempt to kill this program. So it's not going anywhere. Well, that is the forgiveness benefit isn't going anywhere, but your ability to qualify for these benefits, that's fast approaching. The deadline to get the full relief under the adjustment is the end of this month. You have until then to submit a consolidation application to the Education Department if you haven't already done so recently. Now, let me clear up who needs to consolidate. In my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to consolidate if you have fell loans. It makes even more sense to consolidate if you have multiple loans with different repayment start dates. For example, say you went to school in 1994 and then went back in 2008 when the market crashed. By consolidating, you can give those newer loans the same credit toward forgiveness as your 1994 loans. So given that huge benefit, I don't see why anyone wouldn't consolidate. Honestly, I have a hard time thinking of someone who shouldn't. I understand you may have concerns about your payment increasing, 
but there are ways around that. Once you consolidate, you'll have even more repayment options than you had before. Now, I get it. The payment estimator on studentaid.gov can throw people off if you don't fully understand your repayment options and estimated credit toward forgiveness. So I get why you may hold off on consolidating. But if I were in your position, I strongly consider consolidating, getting the forgiveness credit, and then finding the right repayment plan that fits your goals once you know how much longer you have until your loans will be forgiven. All right, so that's enough about the one-time account adjustment. Let's move on to the save plan. Now, I know many of you have been following the news about the lawsuits challenging the save plan. It's important to understand what's going on, so let's break it down. First, there are actually two separate lawsuits, one filed by the Kansas Attorney General and another by the Missouri Attorney General. The Kansas lawsuit originally involved 11 Republican-led states, but the judge recently ruled that only South Carolina, Texas, and Alaska had the legal right to proceed with the case. The judge essentially told the other eight states, sorry, but you don't have a dog in this fight. Meanwhile, the Missouri lawsuit, which was filed alongside seven other states, had its day in court last Monday. The judge heard arguments from both sides and said he plans to make a decision within a couple of weeks. The states in the Missouri case are arguing that Congress never gave the green light for the SAVE plan and that the Secretary of Education doesn't have the power to make it happen. Missouri in particular is claiming that the plan would hurt their state's student loan authority, known as Mohila. Now, it's important to remember that the SAVE plan, it's separate from the broadest student loan forgiveness plan that the Supreme Court killed last year. One thing to keep an eye on in the Missouri case is the timing. The states filed their lawsuit months after the SAVE plan was proposed, so there are questions about whether they waited too long to take action. So where does that leave us? Well, to be honest, I'm concerned. The court circuit handling the Missouri case is the same one that put the brakes on Biden's original forgiveness plan, which the Supreme Court later upheld. So there's a real possibility that the SAVE plan could be sent packing. But here's the thing, even if that happens, it's not the end of the world. Sure, your payments might go up a bit, but it won't put the in a blow your budget out the water kind of way. That's because we'll likely fall back on the revised pay as you earn plan. Now, repay isn't quite as easy on a wallet as save, but for years, it was the most affordable option out there. Now, of course, I know that everything costs an arm and a leg these days. I mean, I just paid $3.50 for a single avocado. I didn't want to, but I made carnitas last night and you can't have carnitas without avocado. Now, I know that's sacrilegious to some of y'all, but I'm a gringo, so it is what it is. But setting aside my non-traditional taco habits, I totally get why this whole situation might be scaring you, might be freaking you out. But here's the deal. We can only control what's in our power to control. We take what comes and we adjust. My team and I, we're old pros at finding all the right angles to keep your payments as low as possible while making sure you keep progressing toward forgiveness. And we'll do the same here, no matter what happens with the save plan. So my advice, stay focused on what you can do right now. If you're eligible for save, keep on keeping on. If the plan gets axed, we'll roll with the punches and find the next best option for you. But while the save plan is here, let's talk about what's happening in July. First and foremost, the SAVE plan is getting a serious upgrade in the affordability department. The Department of Education is changing the formula for calculating your monthly payments. And for a lot of you, that's going to mean more money staying in your pocket. If you've got only undergraduate loans, you're the big winner here. Instead of paying 10% of your discretionary income each month, you'll only be on the hook for 5%. That's right, your payments could be slashed in half. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're flying solo and bringing in $40,000 a year. Under the current rules, your monthly payment would be around $100. But come July, you could be looking at a payment as low as $50. Now that's an extra $50 in your pocket every month. I don't know about you, but I can think of a few ways to put that money to good use. For me, that means more avocados, obviously. Now, if you've got a mix of undergrad and grad school loans, your payment reduction will depend on the breakdown of your debt. The more undergrad loans you have, the bigger the discount. It's like a sliding scale of savings. And if you're sitting there with only grad school loans, I know you might be feeling a little bit left out. But hey, you're still benefiting from all the other perks of the SAVE plan, like the more generous income exemption and the interest subsidy. The point is, no matter what kind of loans you have, the SAVE plan is working hard to make your life a little easier come July. Again, assuming the plan survives those legal challenges. All right, let's shift gears and talk about the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program quickly. Now, you're probably familiar with the basics of PSLF, so we won't rehash all the details. Instead, let's focus on a significant development that's causing some confusion and concern among borrowers. Here's the deal. As you know, 
the Department of Education took the reins of the PSLEP program and moved it in-house and away from student loan service from Mohila. This change is part of a larger effort to streamline the student loan repayment process and improve the overall borrower experience. The department should be finishing moving all PSLEP records on studentaid.gov starting July 1st. But honestly, I doubt it's gonna happen that soon. There will probably be some delays, but that's okay. Again, control what you can control. Now, if you're currently working towards loan forgiveness on the PSLF, you might be wondering what this means for you. The short answer is it depends. Some borrowers will be transferred from Ohila to a different loan servicer, but not everyone will be affected. The Department of Education will notify you if your loans are being moved to a new servicer. So keep an eye out for any official communication about your account. Even if Mohila remains your loan servicer, you can expect some changes. They're moving to a new loan servicing platform, which means you'll likely receive a notification about the move and any steps you need to take. But here's where things get a bit tricky. The Department of Education has hit the pause button on processing debt relief applications for borrowers in the PSLF program. This processing freeze is expected to last through July, with normal operations resuming later this summer. So what does this mean for you? If you're eligible for loan forgiveness during this pause, you'll need to sit tight until the processing freeze is over. It's frustrating, I know, but the Department of Education is using this time to move PSLF accounts to studentaid.gov and update their systems to handle the influx of borrowers from Mohila. In the meantime, it's crucial that you keep making your monthly payments to your current loan servicer. I can't stress that part enough. Even if your payment accounts look a little bit wonky during this move, don't let that deter you from staying on track. Failing to make payments could lead to delinquency or later default, which is the last thing you want when you're so close to the finish line. Now, if you do reach the magic number of qualifying payments during the processing pause, go ahead and submit your PSLF forms for debt cancellation. While the forms won't be processed right away, getting them in the queue can help ensure a smoother transition once processing resumes. Now, I know this is all a lot to take in, especially when you've been navigating the twists and turns of the PSLF program for years, but here's the bottom line. The changes happening now are ultimately designed to make the process easier and more efficient for borrowers like you. Yes, there may be some bumps along the way as the Department of Education works to update their systems and transfer accounts, but the end goal is to provide a more streamlined and borrower-friendly experience. All right, before we wrap up, let's touch on Biden's newest student loan forgiveness plan, which has been making headlines lately. This plan, known as Plan B, is the administration's response to the Supreme Court striking down the original debt relief plan last summer. Under Plan B, nearly 28 million Americans could receive full or partial loan forgiveness. The plan targets specific groups of borrowers, including those who owe more than they initially borrowed due to accrued interest and those who have been repaying their loans for more than 20 years. One of the most significant aspects of the plan is the interest provisions. Low-income borrowers could have all of their accrued interest eliminated, while others could see up to $20,000 of interest canceled if they owe more than they initially borrowed. These interest provisions alone are expected to impact around 26 million people. Now, as with any major policy proposal, there are supporters and there are critics. Congressional Democrats have backed the plan, while Congressional Republicans have criticized it as an unconstitutional and expensive wealth transfer. Some taxpayers see it as a life-changing opportunity, while others view it as unfair to those who have already paid off their loans or never attended college. The public comment period for Plan B just ended, and the Education Department received over 65,000 comments. They'll need to review and respond to each one before finalizing the regulations. But if all goes according to plan, borrowers could start seeing relief by early fall. Of course, legal challenges are likely, which can throw a wrench in that timeline, but for now, Plan B represents hopes for millions more borrowers who have been waiting forever for relief. As always, my team and I will be keeping a close eye on any developments with Plan B. We'll make sure to keep you updated on what it can mean for your specific situation. All right, so whew, that is a lot. Let's recap the key points. First and foremost, remember that the IDR account adjustment ends this month. If consolidating makes sense for your situation, be sure to do it before the deadline. Next, the save plan is safe for now, but it's important to keep an eye on those lawsuits. They could potentially derail the plan, depending on how things shake out in court. But as of now, the Education Department is moving forward with improvements that will provide even more affordable monthly payments for millions of borrowers. 
Meanwhile, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program should be fully moved over to studentaid.gov in early July. This move should make it easier for more people to get the relief they deserve. And finally, there's Biden's Plan B forgiveness. It's still on the table, but it's faced a ton of public comments and will likely come under legal fire soon. I know it's a lot to take in, but what's wild is that there's even more forgiveness stuff to talk about. For example, have you heard about Navient's new private student loan forgiveness program? If you haven't, watch this video to see if your Navient loans can be forgiven.